Hi, I'm Dr. Larry Malerba, and welcome back to All Things Homeopathy. If you're interested in trying homeopathy for yourself, there are a couple ways to get involved. Either you can seek care from a homeopathic professional, or you can learn about it by using homeopathy for simple first aid situations. If you choose the first option, it's best to entrust your care to a qualified practitioner. Alternatively, there are those who first learn about homeopathy by using it at home. After witnessing how effective it can be, many wind up making it their medical therapy of choice. Cuts, bruises, burns, sprains, strains, the common cold, flu, and insect bites are just a few conditions that homeopathic home care can address. It was Dr. Hans Birch Graham who first brought homeopathy from Denmark to the United States in 1825. Homeopathy spread rapidly across the American frontier thanks largely to the widespread use of domestic remedy kits. Born out of necessity, since the nearest physician was often too far away, families got by by using domestic kits and homeopathic family care manuals. A typical kit contained 10, 20, or 30 or more commonly indicated remedies for first aid situations. Now it's important to know when self-care is advisable, when it's time to consult a professional, and the difference between the two. There are distinct differences between acute care and chronic care homeopathy. An acute illness is a condition that tends to run its course in relatively short order, with or without treatment. A headache or a stiff neck or a head cold, for example, are conditions that most people will recover from sooner or later. Most acute self-limiting illnesses respond well to homeopathic home care. I should note that although homeopathy can be helpful in most situations, when an acute illness rises to the level of an emergency, such patients need to be evaluated by a medical professional. It's important to differentiate between a minor bump on the head and a concussion. Chronic illness is any illness that persists over time. Most cases of arthritis or asthma, for example, don't resolve on their own. It's not advisable for novices or anyone for that matter to treat their own or a family member's chronic illness. While acute care homeopathic treatment is comparatively straightforward, treatment of chronic illness is quite complex and should be left to an experienced practitioner. It's not uncommon to hear people in homeopathic circles speak of constitutional medicine. While the meaning of the term varies depending upon who you talk to, to me it's just another term for treatment that takes into account the whole person. Compare this to conventional treatment, which targets specific symptoms, like a person who takes one pill for headaches, another for constipation, and yet another for depression. Constitutional treatment of that same person would involve choosing the one homeopathic remedy that best fits all of those symptoms, and more. After all, it's self-evident that those symptoms are interrelated as indicated by the obvious fact that they're all happening to the same person. To treat those symptoms as if they're separate is precisely where mainstream medicine makes its biggest mistake. Sometimes the labels on homeopathic products can be confusing or misleading. The FDA, which has a very poor understanding of homeopathy, unfortunately requires each remedy to list a specific symptom or indication that it is used for. In other words, FDA wrongly applies a conventional this-for-that mentality to homeopathic remedies, as in, this remedy is for that problem. But homeopathy doesn't work that way. There's no such thing as a specific remedy that is used for one specific problem. Each given remedy can be useful in a multitude of situations, as long as the symptom profile of the remedy fits the symptom pattern of the problem at hand. Homeopathic remedies can't be pigeonholed in the same way as conventional drugs. Additional confusion arises from the fact that homeopathic companies market combination remedies that are intended for specific problems. For example, a combination remedy for hay fever contains multiple medicines known to be able to help with the symptoms of hay fever. Ideally speaking, the best way to treat hay fever is to choose the one single homeopathic remedy that most closely matches the symptoms of the person with hay fever. A combination remedy represents a shortcut. It's a shotgun approach to remedy selection 
designed for consumers who know little about homeopathy. There's nothing wrong with combination remedies as such. They serve to introduce newcomers to homeopathy. Unfortunately, combination remedies also tend to mislead people about the true nature of homeopathy and what it's really all about. True classical homeopathy entails the selection of the one single medicine that most closely matches the symptom pattern of the sick person, which is then administered in the minimum dose necessary to initiate a healing response. I hope that I've given you some ideas about how to get started with homeopathy and that I've clarified some points of confusion. In the next episode, I'll be talking about how to begin homeopathic self-care at home. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope that you'll check out the next episode of All Things Homeopathy.